Uh, moving on now, House Oversight Committee Chairman James Comer uh, has announced plans to bring contempt of Congress proceedings against FBI Director Christopher Wray. Yeah, he's planning to confront Wray today in a phone call after the FBI failed for a third time to respond to a subpoena asking for the agency to produce any documents with the word Biden in them. For the latest on this developing story and why this is happening, so bizarre, let's welcome in former acting U.S. Attorney General Matthew Whitaker. Uh, Matthew, good morning. Good to see you again. Hey, good morning. Good to be with you both. Uh, so this the story is is pretty wild and and unprecedented in modern history. The document in question, Republicans say, connects President Biden to a five million dollar bribery scheme. Um, Ray has failed on three separate occasions now to provide this document to Congress, who, according to the Constitution, has very clear oversight over the Department of Justice. What do you make of this? Well, this is a uh, one of the few standoffs we've seen. You know, that when I was at the Department of Justice, uh, you know, there were a lot of documents that were requested, and you know, we went through a whole process of accommodation, trying to get uh, Congress what they wanted uh, and respecting, you know, the separation of powers. And in this case, you know, with the stonewalling by the FBI and Chris Ray, you see the only uh, really option that Congress has is to. Hold Chris Ray in contempt, and it'll be very interesting. Uh, first of all, if a full House vote, votes to hold him in contempt, that's a big deal. And then whether or not uh, the Department of Justice decides to prosecute him, like they did so many people uh, that had you know connections to the Trump campaign, like Steve Bannon right. and Navarro. And so you know, I think this is this is going to be a real interesting uh, standoff between uh, two branches of government. Yeah, the FBI responding saying, quote, the FBI remains committed to cooperating with the committee in good faith, uh, but they're not handing over the document. And I guess this just goes to say, isn't this just another example of why Americans, you know, don't have trust in the FBI and other branches of government? Well, and remember, the whole idea of accommodation between the two separate but equal branches is that they work it out. And so that information contained in that document, uh, you know, is certainly Congress can find it out. But, you know, they could be briefed on it. They could receive information. You know, the FBI uh, maybe doesn't want to turn over all of the raw data, but they can work that out. And so the fact that the FBI is saying we're not going to give you any of that information first points to how explosive this information in this document might be right. and how poorly maybe the FBI handled this report um, when they first received it. Yeah. So do, I remember Steve Bannon, by the way, he got what he was sentenced to four months in prison. Yeah. Um, so do, do you think that's what this is all about? Christopher Ray, the Trump appointed director of the FBI, is trying to protect Joe Biden and keep his job. Do you think that's what this is about? I think it's a little more nuanced than that. Uh, I think what it's really about is uh, the FBI trying not to look bad. You know, this is one of the problems with uh, documents, whether they're classified or not, uh, especially in the executive branches. Oftentimes, they're embarrassing. They're not necessarily going to, you know, uh, compromise our, uh, our our sources and, and, and methods of collecting information. But sometimes it's just too embarrassing for the information to get out. And I think that's what the problem is here. Yeah. And the Constitution, it gives Congress oversight of the FBI. So could Congress actually hold Director Ray in contempt? And then what would be next? Yeah, I mean, they certainly could. It goes, first of all, it has to be voted out of the committee and then it has to go to the full floor vote. Uh, and then ultimately that contempt, you know, there's two ways to enforce it. There is a jail in Congress uh, that they could uh, send the sergeant of arms to get Chris Ray. That hasn't happened in a long, long time. I'm not sure anybody wants to go through that process, but typically it's referred to the Department of Justice. And the Department of Justice, for example, didn't prosecute Eric Holder when he was held in contempt for Fast and Furious, but they did uh, prosecute Bannon and Navarro. And and uh, and so there is there's a there's a split. Typically, and unfortunately, it's it's often on partisan lines and who's who's holding Congress and what party is holding the. Uh, executive right. branch. Matt, just about 15 seconds. So, so Comer subpoenaed the document uh, three times, and 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 that he, he hasn't gotten the document yet. What? How do you expect this to play out? Because this is we're in uncharted territory here. Yeah, I think the FBI is going to blink. I think they're trying to find some way to get enough information in that document to uh, the oversight. They're still obviously negotiating this phone call. They're still going to negotiate. And so uh, maybe, you know, we're on the edge of a cliff. We'll see if everybody decides to drive over or not. Yeah, Matthew Whitaker, um, by the way, it's so glad to have you this morning to, uh, to talk about this. Yeah. Excellent timing. Uh, former sure. Acting Attorney General Matthew Whitaker with us. Have a great rest of your day, sir. We appreciate it. All right. Good to see you both. Have you a great too. day. All right. Lots